Hi guys, in this video we're looking at designing an ebook or a print book cover on the iPad really easily. So hence I've titled it How to Design a Romance Book Cover. The focus is of course on romance. So prepare the workspace. Now open Affinity Photo and create a new file. There are many formats for book covers but B format is among the most popular book size so let's try that one. It gives you a starting point anyway. Make the image 129mm wide and 198mm high. If you want the color cover to be suitable for print, use a resolution of 300 dpi and CMYK color mode. Otherwise for ebooks I'll keep it at RGB because that's a digital format and that's your best format for um, ebooks. KDP ebook covers should be the dimensions or ideal dimensions for covers according to KDP uh, 2560 pixels in height and 1600 pixels wide that's easy so if you've got your basic format there you can change that to whatever you like make it a preset it's an ideal height and width ratio of at least 1.6 to 1 so if you study that you'll come up with the best size possible if you're going with KDP in an ebook cover, which is really easy to size because you're not worried about spines and back covers, then the KDP dimensions will suit nearly any ebook that you come across. So it's a good place to start. So let's prepare the assets. First, locate the assets. We're going to use the built in stock studio panel and unsplash. Don't worry about using stock images even though people advise against it, but we're going to modify them anyway. Don't just bung in a stock image and put your title over it. That looks really, really cheap. We're going to need a photo of a couple and a background and some flower petals for decoration and a, sti and a distinctive font for the title. I'm using the font Rochelle. That's a really mm, standard romantic type font, if you like. The three images are available on Unsplash. If you look around for them, you'll find them easily enough. Now, creating guides. Use the crop tool and set the rule of thirds view. The crop tool has a view called thirds. And if you select that, you'll get the cross hatching, um, which outlines the rule of thirds. Now that goes away because it's a crop tool, it um, they immediately use any other tool. So what you want to do is show the guides and, and put guides on there and drag them to the line positions, same positions as the rule of thirds lines. You could also set um, margins the same, but that won't look the same because they won't go to the edge. But drag the guides, it's a bit of a fiddle to get that right, but um, once you've done it once, then that's all you need to do. Of course, they don't print, but they help you, um, as guides do, on setting the photograph, and you can see it there. Now, add the photos. The workspace is all set up, so now we can add the photos. Go to the stock studio and select the photo of the couple. Wander through, you'll find it there. It's pretty well in the first or second page, I think, usually. Well, that one is, anyway. You can use any one you like. Align it with the grid. In the rule of thirds, the areas of focus should be near where the lines cross in that central area there. I've added all three photos, and they're in their separate layers, of course. I'll adjust them when as we go. They are in their individual layers. A bit of a spelling mistake there. Sorry, guys. There's probably a few of those. Now, adjusting the photos. When readjusting the image size, use this method. Select the Transform Studio, select Move, and set the anchor point to the center. You can see the white dot in the square box at the bottom there, and the aspect ratio lock to on. That's between the dimensions. There's a little lock there. Make sure that's set to on. Now adjust either the width or the height to a suitable size, not both. Now you can just drag the numbers up and down and it will increase or decrease. And you'll probably be decreasing the size of the image. 
arrange the image to suit. Now you can see the blue bounding box is outside of the rectangle I've got there, the portrait rectangle. And I've just moved the image around so that the couple are pretty much central to the rule of thirds grid, which is just where I want them. Now, selecting the outline. Switch to Selection Persona. Use the Smart Selection Brush Tool to select the outline of the couple. Then go to Refine Selection Tool, which is on the left there. Not the one that's on the Context Toolbar, but the one on the left. And then when you've finished with the um, refinement, set the output to Layer with Mask. Now that's the output on the Context Toolbar that comes up when you touch the refine selection tool right so output to layer with mask what that does is remove the background and just leave you with the image that you've carefully selected your selection will now look like this check this in the layers panel and you can see in the layers panel you've got the selection mask there if you haven't used that tool before uh, create a duplicate of the image so you're not working on your master file and um, fiddle around with that until you get it right. It's a very useful tool. Now, place the background image into the scene by ticking the visibility box then moving it below the couple layer. Obviously, you know if you don't want all the images to be showing at once, you untick them and that deselects them. Now resize it to fill the canvas using the Transform Studio again and move it so that it doesn't interfere with the foreground. So you can see I've enabled the background and it's filled in behind the couple with a different background than the original because you don't want the original. Adjusting the photos. Now the photos are all there but they don't look that good together yet in their layers. So select the background layer, that's the, the countryside scene. Go to Filters and Gaussian Blur. Adjust the radius to make the background seem more distant and out of focus. I found that 20 pixels radius should do for this. And you can adjust this to suit your requirements. You may, after all, have a different image. Now we need to apply a live filter. Turn off the background layer for the moment so you can see what you're doing. Go to the couple image, go to that layer and apply, apply a filter, live filter and Gaussian blur to it as well. Then click on the live filter mask and use the brush tool with a soft brush carefully reveal the faces. Remember you're painting on the live filter mask here and that will with black and it will reveal the people's faces. Observe the settings used here. Now you can switch on the background layer again. Place a mask layer into the group. This will allow you to further modify the couple image. With that mask in place, paint on this mask with a soft black brush to blend the lower part of the photo with the background. And you can see there I've painted out most of the rest of the lower part of the couple and it reveals the background and you can see the layers panel there where the various masks are fiddle around with that to make, be carefully to make sure you get it right now let's adjust the colors add a selective color adjustment clip it to the layer below select blacks and make them warmer by playing with the sliders the point is to make the shadows more similar to the colours in the background. And you may not see much difference depending on your images. Now we add the decorative petals. 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 <laughs> add the decorative petals. Our cover looks good enough already, but we can make it even better with a certain accent. Let's add some flower petals. It is a romance after all. Flowing across the cover. Open the petals image in its layer. Remember you loaded the images earlier. Using the files erase white background paper to select the white background and remove it. If you use the petals image from Unsplash that is. Otherwise select the white background and remove it 
by using the normal selection methods that you would use to remove a background. Position the petals by placing them in the lower part of the scene and you can see I've angled them across the image there so they're sort of flowing upwards and just drag the whole thing down to that level. Now adjust them to the composition by skewing the image to place the petals diagonally across the scene. The petals have their own shade of red so we need to adjust it to the scene Let's add a hue and saturation adjustment. Go to adjustments and select the hue and saturation adjustment. Now add a levels adjustment. Drag the white marker to about 70% to increase the contrast of the petals. Add some motion to the petals. They're supposed to be flowing after all. So add a mask and paint with a big soft brush over some petals. You can see I've got a few down the lower edge there that have just sort of faintly moved. We're almost done, but there are still a couple of things we can do to make the cover even more appealing. Let's add a trendy bluish tint to the scene. Now I've added only a very faint bluish tint there, but it is there. Add a lens filter adjustment with a blue filter. Next, add a black and white gradient to the mask of the filter to keep the top from being too dark or blue. And you can see how I've got the filters positioned there. Now add a Gaussian blur. Copy and paste the whole composition. Place it on a new layer. Add a strong Gaussian blur to it. You can see on the right hand side the layers panel, I've got two layers there now which are probably duplicate. In the new group select all the layers and then do merge selected. This forces all layers to the same size. Move this layer below the original. Select the thumbnail for the layer to select it. Then go to transform selection and move the selection away from the borders. You can see I've moved the selection slightly inwards, leaving the strong Gaussian blur border around it. It creates a misty border. This will create a nice mist around the cover. Now I've got the edges perhaps a little bit sharp there, but that's something for you to do to adjust that, to smooth it out, or leave it sharp if you like. Now we add the text. From now on, the cover looks just like a beautiful poster. So let's add the text to turn it into a real book cover, using the type tool to add the title over the petals. I use the Rochelle font, white color, with the first line of the title bigger than the second. Only slightly there, but you can see the difference. You can adjust the settings in the character panel to make the text look the best it can. Now I need to move that text apart slightly there, and you do that in the character panel. Add a center guide to ensure you have the text centered. You don't want the text off to one side, do you? And don't worry about the guides, they don't print, and you can turn guides off if you want to. Adding the text for author. Add the author's name on top. I used the Adobe Garamond font, which is all uppercase, but it's smaller than the title and I coloured it with a darker blue. Don't forget to align it as well. Nearly there. Now adding the blurb, let's add a snippet of an encouraging opinion in the empty area of the background. It should be smaller, but still visible. And the red colour of the font links nicely to the warmth of the lower half of the cover. But it also um, links to the romance. Um, of the book because romance novels often have red in the covers and you're finished on the right you can see the finished product and the cover is done on the left it's in a um, mock-up now I have videos on doing mock-ups or you can acquire mock-ups from anywhere and you can make your book look really fancy by putting it into a mock-up
Thanks for watching. Book cover design is not a mysterious art. With today's modern tools and a little bit of reading up on the subject, you can easily design your own professional looking cover. Never use just a stock image with text over it. Look at covers in the genre you write in and copy them until you have it fine tuned. You don't want, or you want people to recognise your work by your covers. How often have you walked into a bookshop and seen a cover and said, oh yes, that'll be such and such. Books are, book authors are often recognisable by their covers, even before you can read the text.